Good morning. Good morning. All right. I've got good news for you. I probably will not be talking any longer than I have to. <laughs> My voice will probably go um, sooner or later. But happy pre-fourth in a, in a couple days. How many times does uh, the Sunday land just before the 4th of July? So we get to celebrate that along with uh, everything that our, our Lord and Savior has done for us. Let us begin with our first hymn, God of Our Fathers. Let us rise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, 
I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our psalm. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. Let us rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 5 through 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet 
in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. <clears throat> Yet hear now his word that I speak in the hearing, in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies his peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known for the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. Or do, not, or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, and the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband while she lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she leaves with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. <clears throat> Likewise, my brothers, you have also died. You have, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that she may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living. In the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. <clears throat> When that shall, when, what then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it, what it is to covet that the law had not said. You shall not covet. By sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment produced in me all kinds of covet Apart from the law, sin lies ahead, and once was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive, and I died. The very commandment that promised life provided to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me, so that the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteousness and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good in order that sin might be shown to be sin and through the commandment might, come at, might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. 
And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. The toughest job you'll ever love. Remember that saying from the Peace Corps? The toughest job you'll ever love. Jesus said, Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I thought Jesus was love. I'm going to go here. I got an email um, last week about a church in Edina, Minnesota. When I saw the email and I, I, I watched it, my blood boiled. Our churches are splintering. Our churches, I'm not talking about the Missouri Synod, I'm talking about churches in general. I'm talking about churches that, like this one particular one, that is not worshiping God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're making up their own. And they're going after their own God as they see him. And it's happening time and time and time again. And I'll tell you, if you go on the internet, look for the Sparkle Creed. It's sickening. Because that is not our God. Our God is not changing. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that's why I think that sword comes in. Because if you love somebody... Do you want them to be with Jesus? 
Or do you want to just get along and say, hey, it's okay. Let's all be happy. <laughs> but if the soul perishes, what good is that? But that's what our society is doing. Our society and some of our churches, and I'm not talking about our LCMS churches. Because I'll tell you this, if that was ever preached, they would be in hot water. We preach Christ crucified. We live a life of repentance. We know he died for us. We know sin sticks with us, but we don't just say, oh, it's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay. Sin is not okay. It never was. It never will be. But the fact is, Jesus died for your sins completely. He is working inside of you to sanctify and purify you. And yes, you will not see that on earth. You will see that when he comes back fully. Right now, we only get a little glimpse. But if we give up on coming to his house and gather together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, receiving the gifts that he has, all is lost. Or if we gather under some other God, small g, as some churches are doing, it's kind of a scary thing. Now, how many of you know what I'm talking about, this church in Edina? So you know why I'm kind of hot about it. They just fell off the cliff. That's why it's important for us to gather because it's going to get harder and harder and harder. The more main, we're talking mainstream churches. We're not talking wacko things out there in, you know, the, the, the uh, I used to call them the holy rollers back in the 70s. We're talking mainstream. And they've fallen off the cliff. And to me, it's kind of scary. That's why we must gather closer together. Hang on to scripture. Hang on to Jesus. And stay close to him. Keep coming and hearing his words of the gospel. Keep receiving his body and blood, his true body and blood, for the forgiveness of your sins. Because if we ever get a point and say, hey, well, sin's okay. I'll just do what I want to do. We don't know when that grace will be removed. But it's a slippery slope. Things always start with good intentions. And I think that's what this church is doing. They got good intentions. They want everyone to be happy. The problem is, is they're, they're going off. That's why we have our confessions. This great big thick book. That matches what the Bible says. Keeps us straight. Because we know God does not change. The world will change. We know that. We see that. We see that in the news. But God does not. 
Do you guys feel the, the sword, a division, the last year or so? I'm not talking in the church. I'm talking outside. You guys feel that? You know, it's... And it causes sometimes sin within us. And hopefully that's drawing you to Christ, asking for his forgiveness. You know, last week I was moving, spent two days with two different trucks, moving stuff from Immokalee to the thing. We had a couple hiccups and stuff with people (laughs) trying to get stuff out of there. Sometimes it doesn't make you happy when people don't do what they should do. (laughs) And just as you guys have ownership of the church, you know, I I feel a duty to leave it better for the people coming in. So in those little things where I get, might get upset, I ask God to forgive me daily. And that's where we're at. And he does. And he heals us. He cleanses us. Because that division we see with the world, you know, we might even have our own families that maybe they're not Christian. And you feel that sword. That division. But don't be fooled by the world that say, hey, it's okay. As long as you believe something, you're okay. No, you're not. (laughs) There's only one God. There's only one Jesus. There's only one Holy Spirit. It's tough when it comes into your own family. We all have maybe one relative who's not a Christian. Maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't know everybody. And that's, that's sometimes tough, especially when you get together at holidays. And somehow Jesus is brought up. But we can't shy away from telling people about Jesus. If it falls on deaf ears, it falls on deaf ears. That's up to them. But we just spread the news. We just spread the seed. Whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple... In the text, in the context, he's not talking about children. (laughs) He's talking about the disciples. He's talking about giving them a cold drink. And when you give them a cold drink, you're giving Christ a cold drink. I tell you, stand firm in, in the faith. Let your good work shine from and go forth. Get into your Bibles. Then read. Because I don't think things are going to get easier. But with Christ, He went before us. With Christ, He did everything for us. He paid the price for us. It's finished. It's done. We can rest in that assurance. We can rest in that assurance that we have access to God. So yeah, sometimes as a Christian, it's tough. But yeah, I remember, Jesus went first. It's kind of like he, uh, 
You ever see a minesweeper? <laughs> or the, or the, uh, the guys in the radio truck behind the lines that figure out where everyone is when you're going into battle? Jesus has done that. God is doing that for us. Figure out where all the mines are. He's done the hard work. He's taken the blows. He's taken direct blows from the mines. The mines of sin. That can kill and destroy. But he paid the ultimate price for you that you would have forgiveness that you would have life and salvation and we hang on to that most tightly amen if I could have the the kids come forward Yeah, and I told you guys I weren't even going to talk that much. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Good? Simple question. Do you guys listen to me? Yeah. Why? Respectful. What's that? I'm speaking. The pastor. Okay, what's that have to do with it? If we take God's word. Let me let me ask you this. Hold hold that back in your brain. You ever have a babysitter? No. Oh, there goes that story. <laughs> okay, I've had babysitters before. And let's use my kids. That's easier. So my kids have had babysitters. You know, I would give them instructions. You know, if they eat all their food, they can have dessert. So they get dessert. Or, and then they have to go to bed at like 8 o'clock or whatever. So is the babysitter the parent? But what is the babysitter doing? Watching them. Watching them. Following my instructions. Right? What's that? Not leading them to disaster. They could choose to not follow your instructions. Well, but she did. <laughs> Just go with that. What do I do? Whose instructions do I follow? God. Am I God? Am I Jesus? No. No. But in this place, I speak for him. Like the babysitter speaks for me and my wife. I speak for God. I speak for Jesus. Do I use my own word? Whose word do I use? God's word of what he wants you to hear. So we can thank him, you know, this, this 4th of July. You know, I know it's not here yet, but it's almost. Three, two, days. Two, days. two days. Two days. You know. I mean, that's what pastors do. They speak, they speak his word for him in this, in this place. They speak forgiveness. Is it my forgiveness? No. no. It's God's forgiveness. But spoken through me, just like Moses spoke. He was like the mouthpiece for God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you have done for us. Be with us, care for us, and hold us in your hand. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. See if I can get up. Let us rise for the Nicene Creed.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, who was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, rule and govern your church and all her pastors and ministers, that she may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word and defended against all adversaries, that thereby faith may be strengthened and love increased in us. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, your son was rejected on earth even by his friends and relatives. Give consolation to all Christians who feel the sword of division brought about by the confession of Christ's truth, especially those who cannot find agreement within their own families on the word of God from which life itself comes. Assure them that their stand for your truth is necessary and guard them from seeking a false or easier peace. Turn us in every earthly disappointment toward the promise of your eternal and undivided church triumphant. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, bring earthly peace, not a sword, to our homes by your grace. Foster a common love and knowledge of your word among husband and wives, parents and children, and guide their love for one another by your love for them. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, watch over all who make, judge, and administer the laws of our nation and preserve us from sinful contempt of good order and godly laws. Give to our authorities integrity and honor and bless all all inhabitants with charity and love. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, according to your promise, you returned exiles from, from captivity to Jerusalem. Remember those who are displaced from their homes by violence, war, or persecution. Provide them with shelter and bodily needs and foster in them the hope of an eternal home in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of heaven and earth, strengthen your people to hold fast to your word in times of trouble. We pray for uh, Sandy and Doug Greggy and the McComb family at the death of Kay McComb. And we pray for Norm Wellman and his family at the death of Rita Wellman. We pray for Elsie, Mary, Bob, Dennis, and Alan and all those that we name in our hearts. Bring them healing and comfort. Sustain their faith in Christ, in his peace, and in his life. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we have died to the law through the body of Christ, and now belong to him who was raised from the dead. Prepare all who commune this day with penitent hearts and a true confession of faith to receive Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless us in Christ, 
that we may bear much fruit. Receive our inadequate thanks for your kindness, especially toward all who have died in the faith and now rest from their labors. Preserve us in the way of the Holy Spirit until we stand with them in glory. For you live and reign with the same Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and solitary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord, in the confession of the only true God. We worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majestic co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, and the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take ye, this is my body given to, for you as often as you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. After he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take drink, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. As often as you do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, and your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So flowers this morning were given by Betty and Ralph Willis in memory of uh, Janice uh, Pankow. Birthdays this morning, William Adams and my son, uh, Jeff Glander. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings. Uh, 
uh, 37th uh, year anniversary celebration for Sandy and Doug Gregge. They're in Iowa somewhere. I'm assuming they're in Iowa. Um, Uh, let's see here. Uh, refreshments by Steve. And Steve always does good refreshments, so join us. Join us in the back. Um, I'm, I'm doing something a little different. I'm using a video for Bible study because my, my voice is shot. So I've got the, uh, the movie The Bible. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I don't know how far we'll get, but we'll start at the beginning and just see how far we get in there. There will be Sunday school today. Um, Wednesday's Bible class. No? Me? Oh, okay. I'll be, I'll be playing another video, but this video is about scientific evidence of the flood. It's kind of, kind of interesting. It's a, it's a little documentary uh, on the flood, so we'll be doing that on Wednesday. Um, it's, it's scientists and uh, it's like paleontologists and who are the rock people? Geologists. Geologists. Um, <laughs> you like that? I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, but they're Christian, so there's a, a Christian pers perspective, but from science. So very interesting. Uh, so join us uh, 1030 uh, Wednesday. Again, VBS, call Sandy Greggy to, to uh, volunteer. It'll be July 24th through 28th. Going to be here before we know it. VBS giving trees in the Narthex. I don't know how, much, how many are left. I didn't, get a, I didn't take a look at it this morning. There's quite a few. Five? There are five more tags you can take. So do not rush. <laughs> anything, anything else I'm missing? I wish you a blessed, um, a blessed 4th of July and safe 4th of July. Um, we did have services on Amaki yesterday at 9 o'clock. Um, not in a church, but it's, you know, that's okay. That's okay. We have a facility. I'm actually working on another church that will let us use our facility, but they're doing some remodel, so I'm hoping and praying. So keep us in our prayers. We are pretty much moved out of the building, um, and about the only thing we have to do is take down our sign, because um, we'll probably save that for later, and I think we're, we're kind of I don't want to say done because it's not done. It's like a new beginning. So nothing I'm, I'm missing. Uh, yeah, and I apologize because I'm, I'm kind of under the weather a little bit. So join us. Join us in the back for some fellowship and food. And go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>